What happens after someone kicks the bucket in the world of One Piece? Do the souls of the departed really go to the underworld that Brooke told us about? And how is he even able to channel its chill in his own attacks? Well, like many mysteries in One Piece, I think that Oda has dropped little nuggets of information that may help us start piecing this one together. And just as you might expect, that will involve none other than the Soul King himself. <laughs> But what if I told you that Blackbeard's 8th Titanic captain may also have access to the underworld? Yes, I'm referring to this bozo, Vasco Shot, and I think his future devil fruit may even allow him to control some of the souls that reside there. But before we dive in, please make sure to smash the like button and subscribe. I mean, it's just one single click, and it's also literally the number one way to support me as a creator, so I'd appreciate it big time. But onto the theory. Uh, yeah. I want to start by giving credit to a fellow YouTuber named Alpha Too Late. I was first turned on to this idea thanks to their own Vasco Shot video, and I've been able to add quite a bit to it that might even go on to explain how the entire underworld works. So hats off to Alpha, and you should definitely check their channel out. But Alpha starts their theory by using this odd looking character from the cover page of chapter 902. Some of you may already be picking up on the resemblance between him and Vasco Shot, and the title of this cover page is Sweets. Busters, which is an obvious tie to Ghostbusters. And if you're already a fan of the Ghostbusters series, then you probably noticed that this Vasco shot looking green blob looks a lot like Slimer. Slimer is one of the most well-known ghosts from the franchise, and Slimer is consistently shown with a massive appetite, similar to how Vasco Shot seems to have an appetite for sake, since he is literally known as Heavy Drinker. And just look how similar Vasco Shot is to this green fella in Chapter 902. They both have the same type of nose, and their tongue is even sticking out. I think the obvious question now is whether this is a hint to Vasco Shot's future devil fruit. And since ghosts are made of ectoplasm in the Ghostbuster series, including Slimer, Slimer, that is a good start for how this fruit might work. Ectoplasm comes with both a physical and energetic element to it, and that's actually exactly how Brook's soul works as well. During Fishman Island, Brook fought Zeo and his head snapped off, but he didn't die. And Brook explained how he's learned a lot more about the power of the Yami Yami over the last two years, and he also stated that though his spirit has parted from his body and belongs in the afterlife, it remains here because of a unique energy that is almost physical in in form. And with his music, he can even touch the souls of others with that same energy and draw them into his world and even bewitch their senses. And then he said that the power that holds him to this world is his very soul. This seems to be different than the souls that Big Mom uses for her homies, partially due to the appearance, but also the simple fact that Brooke's soul came back from the afterlife first instead of being taken from a living person. So perhaps Vasco Shot's future devil fruit is going going to allow him to control this unique energy that allows souls to remain in the real world instead of the afterlife, or basically just an ectoplasm fruit. And we all know that Blackbeard loves to hunt devil fruits down and give the strongest ones to himself or his crew, so I expect this fruit to be insanely powerful. And I even think that this fruit will actually end up being a mythical zone type, and that's because we have already seen a mythical creature very similar to Slimer in the story, and that's a being that's literally named the the slime that Brooke talked about during Punk Hazard. Isn't it weird that of all people, the Soul King is the one who knows about this thing? But anyways, Brooke was reminded of this story when looking at Smiley, who looks like he's made of a similar type of substance as the being in Chapter 902 and the slime that Brooke thought about. And Brooke also says how the slime slime can burn clothes, but also leave the flesh intact, which was perfect because the slime loved to hunt down women. And since Vasco Shot was just saying some creepy about Boa in chapter 1059, I think this makes him a natural fit for a power just like that. And we all know that zones have a will of their own, so who would be a better fit than some bum like Vasco Shot? So what else could this ectoplasm do in battle? I mean, Brook has really only phased through walls and used his Soul King form with his music, but based off this legend, Vasco Shot may be able to burn clothes and even more, especially if he's awakened, which makes Brook a natural counter since he doesn't have any flesh to burn in the 
the first place. But Vasco should also be able to hit his Soul King form, so it's kind of a double-edged sword. And as I was saying earlier, Brook said he can only stay in this world because of this unique energy. So if Vasco Shot can control this energy, he would be a threat for taking out Brook for good. And I think a battle between these two would be the perfect time to finally get the exposition on the underworld that we have all been waiting for. And just to clarify, we have actually heard about a few different underworlds. Of course, there's the slave trading version that we've seen a number of times, and there's also the underworld of the sea where the sun is unable to reach. But you already know I'm talking about the underworld, where the dead go to rest and where Brooks somehow channels ice powers from, which is one reason why we know it's an actual place. Plus, doesn't Ghost vs. Ghost make for a practically seamless underworld fight? I mean, the only other potential chance to see the underworld that I can even think of is something with the Grim Reaper that paid Zoro a visit in the raid on Onigashima. But we still just know so little about that, and the Reaper could simply just be tied to Enma. So until we learn more, I think the Soul King fighting against a legendary mythical ghost is the perfect chance to get our full expose on the underworld, and even how souls and death really work in the world of One Piece. And if you're already questioning how they'd even get there in the first place, well, that's why Brook and Vasco Shot would be the perfect two people to do it. Brook has already apparently been there before, and if Vasco can control the same energy, then these might be the only two people who could reasonably make their way there. But before we dive into the fight itself, maybe we should talk about what the underworld might be like and how it even works. I mean, is there really some place that holds all of the souls of those who've passed away? And I actually think there is, and that's because of what happened to Brook's soul when he died on his ship. After he passed away the first time, his soul came back to the living world and looked for his body for an entire year. So this tells us that even if you have the Revive Revive fruit, your soul starts out at some separate location. The soul doesn't just leave the body and immediately turn around and return. It obviously has to start somewhere else, meaning it may be a different substance entirely than the souls that we've seen from Big Mom. I mean, she could take a certain amount of lifespan from you, but Brooke had no more lifespan when he died. And maybe you're trying to argue that he just got an extra lifespan or something like that from his fruit, but he specifically says that there's a unique energy involved with his spirit now, and that's what allows him to stay there, which tells me that it's very different than the situation with Big Mom and the types of souls that she takes. And if there wasn't some other location for his soul to start at, then he wouldn't have needed to fly around. So this leads me to believe that there has to be some type of home base or headquarters for the souls of the departed, and that's the underworld. And the way that Brook's power works is it enables that soul to leave the underworld and come back to his body. And this really shouldn't seem that crazy. In real life and in all types of mythology, people consider there to be places for souls to go after they've died. So why should we expect anything different from the world of One Piece? There must be some type of central hub for the souls to go after they leave the mortal plane. And that's where Brook's soul started after he died the first time. And now I can already imagine that some of you might be cringing at the idea of dead people coming back in One Piece. And I totally hear you. And I'm pretty sure Oda hears you. Even communicating with the deceased, let alone resurrecting, sounds pretty unsavory. And so does time travel, but Oda handled that pretty well so far. And that's because he put reasonable limits on it, like not letting people go back in time. And I mean, he already brought one person back, being Brooke, so let's just give this idea a chance. And I think Oda's limit on the underworld would simply be that the souls just can't leave the underworld, at least without the aid of this energy that Brooke and potentially Vasco Shot are able to use. I mean, obviously it let Brooke leave the underworld, so potentially it can do the same for others. I mean, the underworld is probably just a different dimension entirely. Look back to Blue Nose Fruit and how he would take you to the Door Door dimension. It's probably very similar to that, and one that very few people ever have the capability of entering. But I think the Soul King and the Ectoplasm Man are the perfect people to do so. And I'm imagining that in the underworld, the souls aren't their normal selves probably a lot more like zombies or even just lifeless. In many types of fiction or folklore, we see souls as depressed or simply floating in a river or something. So upon entering the underworld, I don't expect us to meet all of our friends or anything, but perhaps those who can control this ectoplasm type soul energy can awaken them somehow. I kind of think of them as potential soul zombies. It would be like Moria's ability, except souls instead of shadows. So Vasco may be able to control the literal departed soul 
souls instead of shadows like Moria does. It's almost like this version of souls could be considered the soul shadow or something. And maybe he can bring those souls back to the real world somehow and take over corpses just like Brooke's soul did when he came back. And imagine Brooke needing to fight the actual souls of his old crewmates, and maybe even the likes of Ace or Rox or Whitebeard if they were all under Vasco's control. But Brooke is the Soul King, so who would truly have the advantage if they duked it out in the depths of the underworld? Well, I think it would really come down to whoever has more soul. Brooke would probably use music to override anyone in Vasco's control, kind of like the chess pieces in Whole Cake, but Vasco Shot was a level 6 prisoner who probably has tons of intel about his fruit's abilities thanks to Blackbeard. So I wouldn't even be surprised if he was awakened by the time we get around to this fight. So Brooke has to somehow hold off whatever underworld army Vasco Shot puts together that may even include some of his own friends. And this fight may even hold higher stakes than just Brooke's fate alone. Because if Vasco Shot can take these souls out of the underworld with him and use them to control corpses or maybe even weak-willed living people, then allowing him to escape would honestly wreak havoc on the world. And we all know that Blackbeard has some crazy plan to take over the world, and this seems like a potential plan worthy of his attention. So Brooke's role would then be to make sure that all the souls remain in the afterlife, which would truly make Brooke just like the Grim Reaper, and may even hint that there's more to Brooke's fruit than meets the eye. I mean, he literally went to hell and was allowed to come back, and now can even manipulate other people's souls. So maybe there's more to his fruit than we already think. And so I think this could all lead to an amazing exposition where Brooke has to play his music with so much heart and soul that he just overpowers the ectoplasm of Vasco Shot and gets the entire underworld to fight along his side. I mean, just imagine Brooke leading an underworld concert that ultimately gets every soul there to fight along with him, and then even overpower the slime himself. This would truly make him worthy of the title of Soul King. And we all know that music makes people sing and dance, so maybe this even gives Brooke one final chance to play Bink Sake with his old crew, deep down in the underworld where they can even learn that Laboon is doing well before they finally lay to rest for good. Well that's all I had for today, but please make sure you like and subscribe, and if you have any more to add, please do so down in the comments where I try to respond to each and every one. And while you're at it, maybe check out one of these two videos that you should probably already see on the screen. Later.